Holy Spirit, come to us. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Holy Spirit, come to us. Holy Spirit, come to us. Hopefully round two will be better. Holy Spirit, come to us. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Holy Spirit, come to us. Holy Spirit, come to us. This is so very humbling. I cannot wait until Susan is with us. Here we go again. Holy Spirit, come to us. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Holy Spirit, come to us. Holy Spirit, come to us. What happened if we went to stop with me? You, you started scrolling? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to, and to the, the Son. Son and, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 104, verses 25 through 35 and 37. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan. Which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you. To give them their food in due season. You give it to them. They gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. 
you hide your face and they're terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. And forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Serena, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speak about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O King of all ages, 
Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. I have to sit in there. It's it's a blank screen. Uh, are we there? Yeah, we're there. All nations will draw near and fall down before you. Because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing. Hopefully you better than I. Like the murmur of the dove song, like the challenge of her flight, like the vigor of the wind's rush, like the new flame's eager light. Come, Holy Spirit, come to the members of Christ's body, to the branches of the vine, to the church in faith assembled, to the minds a gift and sign. Come, Holy Spirit, come. With the healing of division, with a ceaseless voice of prayer, with the power to love and witness, with a peace beyond compare, come, Holy Spirit, come. Good morning. Today is the day of Pentecost, a principal feast of the church and the official end of the Easter season. Think back to the Pentecost Sundays of the past. In your experience, how was Pentecost celebrated? No doubt if we'd been able to meet in person today, we may have done like some churches do and had a procession with banners or cots, and Father Bill would have been in his red stole and chasuble, there may even have been a birthday cake at coffee hour because Pentecost is, after all, the birthday of the church. Some churches even have a long-standing custom of simultaneous readings of the scripture for the day in multiple languages. Over the years, I've heard simultaneous readings of the gospel in native French, native Russian, native Japanese, as well as high school or college German, Spanish, Latin, and English, of course, and there's probably some that I've forgotten. The idea of churches doing this on Pentecost is to remember what happened on that day when people from every nation under heaven heard the disciples proclaim the good news in their own native language. The only problem with this simultaneous reading is that the effect is sometimes more a Babel than Pentecost. You remember the Tower of Babel from Genesis, the story of human pride, of people trying to reach heaven on their own power, and God's response that left the entire world unable to communicate with each other. I suppose this story was written to explain why understanding and cooperation don't always come easy for us. 
We struggle to say the least throughout our history and even more so in these days of so social media, it seems that what can be misunderstood will be misunderstood. So many times we don't understand each other even when we speak the same language. Our inability to accept differences in how we live in what we believe is sometimes baffling. This is especially true for those of us who are Christian because we have Jesus' life and teachings as our example. I know there are people who believe the story of the Tower of Babel and that God intentionally confused our language to make us unable to communicate with each other. But is it more truthful to say that we've just forgotten the language of grace, the language of love, the language of God. I have several friends in seminary who are from Africa. They're all priests in the Episcopal Church and they grew up in Burundi, Mozambique and Malawi. They may not share a native language but they share a second language in English and a love of God through our savior Jesus Christ. I am consistently humbled by the sacrifices these young men are making leaving their families and their young children because the opportunities for education are so very limited in their native countries. I'm thankful for their presence along with that of their sponsor who is an, a, an Episcopal Bishop from Malawi. He's a professor at Suwannee as well. They all bring a rich cultural diversity and a perspective to the school of theology which is much needed and for which I am very grateful. When the bishop celebrates the Eucharist, part of the service as well as the blessing are always in his native language. And that in itself is a blessing, even though I don't understand a single word. That my friends is the language of God. One of the important lessons I've learned from these friends is how blessed we are in this country. They've been willing to share their experiences from the poverty of their villages to the inability of all but the very brightest and best to get any education above a very basic level. It's very sobering and almost overwhelming to learn from these young priests how the majority of the world actually lives. It's hard for us to understand that just surviving is a main concern in many of these countries. We've recently been inconvenienced by the effects of COVID-19 on our livelihood, on our health, and on our concern for the health of others. In fact, some of us have just lost a friend in the Reverend Pearl Slay, a deacon in the church, who I worked with on diocesan council a while back. Even though we mourn the loss of friends and acquaintances, even though we fuss about the inconvenience. Unlike much of the world, we still have seemingly unlimited access to the necessities of life, like a place to live, fresh water, food, clothes, and vehicles to take us anywhere on a whim. In the reading from Acts today, the disciples were gathered along with people from all around to celebrate the traditional spring harvest festival of Shavuot, a Jewish festival also known as Pentecost, one of the seven feasts of Israel. The Spirit of God came down upon the disciples, releasing them from their fear, their fear of living without Jesus, their fear of being persecuted because of Jesus, renewing their understanding of Jesus' promise to be an advocate to them and bringing them and us together again with the language of God's love. The differences among us in communication and dialogue, culture, background, wealth, poverty, were burned away by those tongues of fire. We're all beloved children of God. The Gospel of John tells the Pentecost story a little differently. From the reading today, Jesus appears to the disciples where they were together behind locked doors again because of their fear. Jesus said, peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so send I you. And he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit, the same Spirit that is at work within us today, came upon them in spite of their fear, transforming them into the apostles whose acts were written about and have been read for over 2,000 years. In both Pentecost stories, Jesus' followers were waiting and praying in anticipation of this gift that he had promised. Pentecost is called the birthday of the church because it was through this act of the Holy Spirit that the disciples were empowered to go out into the world and spread the gospel as Jesus had commanded. We may not know or understand the factual account of how the disciples received the Holy Spirit, but we do know that God's spirit came and gave them power because we, the church, are the result. And the church kept being reborn. Every time we meet together, even via Zoom, every time we celebrate the Eucharist, the church is being reborn. Every time a child or an adult is baptized, the church is reborn. And every time we feed the hungry, tend the sick, and visit those in need, the church is reborn. Pentecost reminds us that we too are to be open to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We too are to be willing to proclaim Jesus' message of God's love to all people. And most of all, we're to be willing to love all of God's children as God loves us. As the Spirit used the disciples on Pentecost to change the lives of those who listened to their words, so the Spirit on this Pentecost will change us if we just listen. Listen and learn God's language of love. After all, God speaks to us in the one word that ends fear and brings love and lasting peace. The Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together saying the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, 
On this day, you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we have, as you probably realized, many things to pray about, especially with our country and, and with uh, our pandemic. So let's start with that. Lord, we pray this day for your healing touch to be over our land and that this, this pandemic will cease and your people will Rejoice and be happy on this Pentecost Sunday. We ask you to be with all of those who are stricken by this virus. We pray for your healing to be with them. We pray for your healing to be with us. We pray for peace. We pray for health. And we pray that, Lord, you, will, you would save us. We also pray for our country, the violence that has racked us over the last few days. We pray for your peace. We pray for understanding. We pray that people will be able to listen to each other. And we pray again for blessed peace. Bring your people into your kingdom and let us know the power of joy and love. Let us treat each other correctly the way we should and know we should treat each other. Let us love our neighbor as ourselves. Let us be the people you have called us to be especially on this day called Pentecost. Fill us with that Holy Spirit of God that we may go out and share that love with everyone. We also pray this day for those that need our prayers from the congregation and those without, beyond, doors. We pray for Isabel, for Marquita and Jean, for Reese Fitzgerald, for Karen Pence, for Kathy, for Becky Davis, for Vernon Hutchins, for Jim Knowles, for Haven Temple, for Dalin Jones, for Jack Corey, for Richard and Darla Tatum, for Mary and Ben Cashin, for, uh, for Bernice Appledorn, for Joanne Glover, for Lisa and Children, for Jane Fail, for Trish, for Charlotte Felton and Jean, uh, and for Jean Griffith, for Nick Vitale, for Michael and Sarah Lynn and Lily, Teresa, Jeff Adams, Joe Cochran, Elizabeth, Eric, Christopher, Ellen Teverino and her brothers in Ireland, for our brother Sam Harrison, for Larry, Michael, and, and uh, Lolly, who had a hip replacement, for Sam Sutton, for Mary M, for Matt and Matt and James. James Hunt and his family as he has passed away. We also pray for uh, Pearl Slay who has passed away. Our dear sister in Falkland, Alabama. We pray that you will be with Willie and the children this day and that you will comfort them in knowing that she is with her savior this morning. 
We also pray for hospital workers and firefighters, police officers, social workers, and all that are the first responders to go into all these dangerous situations. And we pray for their wisdom as they come in these situations. For people needing surgeries, we pray for our country's health and as our economy opens. We pray for wise decisions for, from our leaders, from our president down, on down through governors and local officials and the rest, mayors. We pray for all of these things. We pray again for a happy Pentecost. We pray that we would rejoice in your birthday church and that we will be able to respond to the love that is required of us. We pray for the opening of our church building when it would come. We pray that it will come with joy and great vigor. And we thank you for all your people who have stayed faithful through this long interim while all we have is the beauty of Zoom. Are there other prayers that for other people? We also pray for Rudy Jones and uh, uh, and children. For a good friend of mine. Oh. I pray for Joy, a friend of mine, and all of her caregiving that she's doing with her husband. Mm -hmm. For my friend Mary Beth in North Carolina, who's moving her mother closer to her in this difficult time, I hope that her mother will like being moved. And, um, and then her stepmom, who has been diagnosed with bladder cancer and needs surgery, and that's being delayed. These are hard times for her. Praying for Ronnie Jones, who will have surgery on Tuesday to remove a tumor. Praying that it all is good and quick and no complications. Give you thanks that we can wear red before you today and even joke with our silly socks. We thank you for making us a family and we especially make, thank you for making us your family. For those who are angry, Lord, and have no place to take their anger, give them peace and let them see justice. Let the violence cease. Thank you for that. I didn't have to, that my eye has stayed in control. Yes. Thank you for prayers and friends. Amen. Thank you for Sarah, Lord. Mm -hmm. I give thanks for the, to the staff and everyone at St. Joseph's who are carrying on in a diff difficult time and helping keep us together. Pray for the food pantry that it can continue to serve the needs of the mountain and the area. We pray for Jim and for Joan and, and Liz and all the rest of them. Larry, Larry, not Larry, but uh, um, Paul and Burton and all the rest. I think I may have been muted when I prayed for my neighbor Carson, who just found out he's positive for COVID nineteen. Mm. For him to pass quickly. Pray for my senior warden that he catches some fish down in South Alabama. <laughs> I pray for all the police departments all over the country who are extra pressure. I think there's a lot of good ones and 
and I just pray that they can carry on. Let us enter into thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desired, desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of God's only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst each and every one of you this day, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.